Good morning, viewers, and welcome to another Onside SA Soccer Show. Hopefully, you've all had a good Christmas and New Year, and obviously, January will look after itself. Joining me as usual is our regular super sub and Manning Rangers league winner, Gavin Radford. Gav? Morning, Butch. Good to be here. Good festive season? Yeah, a little bit quiet. Uh, yeah. I don't really get into the party mode. I uh, normally just have a quiet evening at home with the missus. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it's good. Watch all the football yesterday? I think my eyes are a little bit warped from watching yeah. all the football, but some tough results. Um, you can see the teams are really fighting at the bottom of the table to try and get those points now, so things are getting interesting. Yeah, a lot of major injuries coming. Spurs losing Harry Kane, Leicester got a problem with Jamie Vardy. And what is going on with Paul Pogba? Ankle injury, foot injury? I think it's a, more of a head injury. I think he's looking to get out of United. I don't think he wants to be there. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if there's going to be too many takers at about 120 million. So he might have an injury, but I mean, we don't know what to expect because Oli's, Oli's not really telling the people. Yeah. The, the, I know there's a bit of lies and truth behind it, so, so we'll wait and see. But I think he wants, well, he wants out. Yeah, no doubt about that. I just think he's, if he's got a foot injury, he's not going to go in January, end of the season. I think it's a formality that he goes. Anyway, we're now going to get hold of our UK correspondent, Stevie Brahm, who's in a rather cold UK office. Steve, are you there? I'm here. Good morning. Yeah, nice and warm, you tell me. Uh, yeah, I think, it, I think it's going to hit about six degrees today or something. But it's uh, cold and dark. I'm very quiet in London. You know, I think uh, I've definitely come back to work too early. <laughs> Steve, uh, we'll kick off with the uh, results yesterday. I'm sure you watched a lot of games other than uh, the three o'clock game. Were Chelsea yeah, no, fortunate I mean, to hang on? I think they were, actually. Uh, the first half, they looked sort of fairly comfortable. But Brighton certainly, uh, uh, they surprised me. I and mean, they really had a go and uh, obviously got a, you know, a, a super goal. Yeah. Their super sub came on with his second goal in two games. And actually, uh, you know, the, the only team looked like winning in the last sort of, 10 minutes or so were Brighton. But uh, you know, I, think, I think Brighton will be happy with that. Chelsea have been good on the road. So I think they'll be a bit disappointed they didn't uh, put Brighton to the sword in, when they were on top in the first half. Yeah, had sort of do it a great chance late on to bend it in. But, you know, for me, once Chelsea scored, they just seemed to back off a bit. But I think a fair result in the end. Yeah, I think so. And I think it shows, you know, Brighton have been playing some, some good football. Um, you know, they're sort of clawing their way about, away from those bottom three positions. Yeah. Steve, uh, Tottenham, I watched that game against Southampton. I don't know what's going on. They were singing, <laughs> you're just a poor Pochettino, the Southampton fans, to Mourinho. And there's yeah, trouble in the camp there already. Yeah, I was surprised. I mean, again, I wasn't surprised Danny Ings scored. I mean, he's, uh, you know, really is sort of hot at the moment. And obviously losing Harry Kane is, uh, is going to be a bit of a blow with a hamstring. Not sure how long that'll... don't know whether it's just a strain or a tear, but obviously it could be quite a few weeks. Um, but, uh, you know, I think difficult times for Spurs. You know, they looked, they were just getting back on track, but a couple of bad results over the holidays. Yeah. Good for Southampton. You know, 10 points from their four games over the holidays. I mean, uh, you know, really put them in a good position. They look sort of dead and buried. You know, you wouldn't put money on them staying up after that morning by Leicester, but they've come back really strongly. Yeah, another team that looked dead and buried was Watford. A little bit of luck with uh, the second goal, but they fought hard to beat Wolves. Well, again, you know, that's the second match that they've uh, they've ended up playing with 10 men. And, and sure they've shown, you know, Nigel Pearson has, uh, and Craig Shakespeare. I think yes. a lot of people underrate Craig Shakespeare. And he's, uh, you know, they were saying that, you know, he's very often, you know, the, the driving force behind the, the manager. But I think they've certainly got them fired up. And my brother, uh, you know, seems to be playing, uh, you know, with a lot more passion and a, a lot more sort of belief. And again, you know, they've had a wonderful sort of hot Christmas period, 10 points from four games. So it's, it's it's certainly sort of hotting up on the bottom and, and sort of leaving Norwich adrift, I'm afraid. Yeah, shame. They fought hard Norwich, you know. I felt, I felt for them with a VAR. Yeah, that was a game I watched because I had a bet on Palace. I thought he was offside, but it's amazing. When VAR works for you, it works. And I haven't seen Norwich have one decision go their way. <coughs> no, I mean, so they were unlucky against Tottenham with those decisions. And yeah. uh, uh, again, I only just saw the highlights. And, you know, it, it's interesting listening to the, uh, obviously, with the whole VAR sort of controversy at the moment, the International um, Football Association Board, IFAB, who actually set the rules, uh, came out the other day and said they don't feel that uh, VAR should be as forensic as it, as it is at the moment. Yeah. So whether or not they're going to look to do something, tweak, tweak uh, the rule, um, to, you know, to show that maybe other parts of the body can't make you offside, other than the you know, 
face down or, or there's got to be a little bit of daylight because it's all very well having these freeze frame of these line being put across, but it's so marginal yeah. uh, and it's, it's having such an impact on the games. So we'll see. You know, right. I don't think anything will happen until the summer with that, though. Yeah, you know, I think the biggest fact of honesty is the time. I think it was one year said it took three minutes. Yeah. You know, and if well, you're a player that's... standing around and you're the supporters in the stadium, you know, three minutes is too long. It is, and they don't really know what's going on. And again, I think there's still the, a lot of debate as to whether or not um, the, the referee should have the final say by going over to the monitor and be guided by what's happening at Stockley Park. But the referee is there to referee the game, and ultimately he should be making the final decision. So I think there's a lot, a lot of things up for discussion with VAR. You know, I mean, I know we're getting, as I say, forensically the right, the right result, but it's, it is taking something away from the game. Yeah. One thing that's not under discussion, Steve, is Arsenal's improvement. They were far too well, especially in the first uh, half. They murdered Man United. So, yeah, they were a different team, and it was interesting that he went for experience. Yes. I mean, you know, all of his old heads he basically had on the pitch at the same time. You know, people were saying that <clears throat> Lacazette and Aubameyang couldn't play together. You know, yet he had them, and he obviously had Pepe, their expensive new signing. He had Ozil in the middle with Zaka. Yeah. You know. Uh, and, and ultimately, the first half, I thought that, that well, by far the best I've, I've seen them play this season. And uh, you know, I think it took United by surprise. Second half, United had a lot of the ball, but never quite did enough to hurt them. And uh, David Luiz, who's obviously come in for a lot of criticism, probably had his best game in an Arsenal shirt. So I think ultimately, you know, it shows that Arteta has sort of um, got them fired up. And it'd be interesting because obviously all the talk recently has been about Zaka and Ozil leaving. Yeah. But it, you know, obviously with both of them playing yesterday, it does make you wonder whether or not Arteta might be uh, thinking that they still have a, a, you know, a, a place in the team. Mm. Steve, before we get into the FA Cup, two questions. One, do you think they'll ever change the Christmas period? There's too many games. You know, we, we spoke earlier before you came on about the injuries, Kane, Vardy. Surely this yeah. has got to do something. Well, I think mean, it's great because you know, they have been playing Christmas games and New Year games for forever. Yeah. In fact, in the old days, they would be playing sort of you know, sort of two games back to back. You know, yeah. in, 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 on consecutive days. Uh, you just you know, but obviously you know these are you know, top athletes, and it is hard to sort of make them do uh, four games in a short space of time. They're talking about a winter break, but, but, but they're not looking at introducing it until after the Christmas period. So uh, I think there's, then you've got the pressure from the, the TV companies and, the, the, you know, Amazon and BT and Sky. I mean, they all want their pound of flesh at this time of year because they, they feel they can get big uh, TV viewing. So I think, you know, there, there is a lot to be said for having at least one game less over the period. I think it, it's definitely... A listening to Phil Neville on the radio driving home last night and he was saying it's not the first or second game it's often the third or fourth game that it takes its toll on the players yes. and uh, you know we saw it at Fulham I mean we've got uh, Aaron Ty midfield he's out injured um, Harrison Reed came back from injury limped off again our three starting midfielders against Leeds were not available yesterday uh, and it's, uh, you know, that really hurt, hurt us and I'm sure lots of other clubs are in the same position Yeah, talking of injuries the the signing thing, the signing date starts. I think was started yesterday. How many clubs yeah, do you really think are going to go in big time for new players? I, I'm not sure about big time, but I think certain clubs will do. I mean, there are teams sort of near the bottom that are going to be desperate to bring somebody in to strengthen. Yeah. Teams at the top, I'm not sure. I mean, City pretty much have said they're not going to do any business. I don't think. I mean, Liverpool already have, haven't they? They brought somebody in, but yeah. I don't think Liverpool need to strengthen. Um, I'm not sure Leicester will either necessarily. I think uh, Leicester are just going to be happy to keep hold of any players if any if any huge bids come in. Uh, I think Chelsea may do. I think Chelsea may do. I think obviously there are still uh, one or two gaps there, and, and obviously they haven't bought anyone for a couple of windows. But below that, you know, you, the, there isn't normally a lot of big movement, big money buys. But you know, someone like Tottenham might need to go out and do something because obviously you know they know they've got the spectre of uh, Ericsson going and whether he goes in January or he hangs on for his free transfer and pay off in, in the summer. Um, you know, but, so there's never a lot of activity, but I think there might be one or two um, further down at the bottom. I think, I think teams will want to strengthen. Villa uh, you know, may need to strengthen. Yeah, no, I agree. Steve, it's FA Cup, and sadly it's not what it used to be where you know, my dad used to love it. Third round, he was at Peterborough. They got there. That was the be-all and end-all the season today. It just doesn't seem that way. No, and obviously, well, having played four games in 10 days, 
Well, I, think I think there's going to be a lot of changes made. No, absolutely. I think absolutely guaranteed. And I think it is a shame and it does devalue it. And in fact, there was a time when you know, the third round or any FA Cup game used to get you know the team would get their biggest gate of the season yeah. now um you know teams fans know that the teams are putting out uh reserved sides and the gate's going to be low everywhere unless you've got sort of like a liverpool everton or something yeah. um but uh, you know, there is no and it's very hard to call because obviously you look at the odds and you think okay like a premiership team should beat a championship team and or whatever but you know you've got situations where pretty much all the Premier League teams and a lot of the championship teams will rest players so it does make it hard to call um, All right. but we but kick you know, off... it can still be one or two shocks yeah well we'll start with your Fulham at home to Aston Villa How well do you see I that? can pretty much guarantee that we will be playing a very weakened side with the injuries we've got um, I, I sort of heard afterwards that it is quite likely that uh, Scott Parker won't take any chances with his key fit players uh, and therefore we will put out some of the kids and I think, uh, you know, I can see, you know, the odds are, you know, we're, we're favourites to win, but I don't think that will happen. Villa will rest some, but their reserves are, are stronger. So I think, I'm, I, you know, reluctantly, I will go for an away win there. OK. Brighton hosts Sheffield Wednesday. I, I think Brighton, you know, have got a decent squad, and I think, yeah. uh, you know, they, they'll, they'll chop and change a bit, but I think they'll be too strong for Sheffield Wednesday. OK. My boys, Preston, who seem to have lost the plot at home to Norwich. They have, but I just wonder whether or not they might go for it and put out a strong team, Preston, because I think Norwich won't. I think Norwich, uh, you know, the position they're in, they can't afford to take any risk with their injuries. I think Norwich will rest uh, virtually their entire first team. I think if Preston put out a strong side, I, I, fancy, I fancy Preston could cause an upset. Well, I hope you're right, Steve, but uh, the way we've been playing <laughs> I know, I know and my mates were at the show, ground, they said we were yeah. woeful yesterday. And the, the question I've got with Norwich, they're not going to win too many games. I think they've only won one or two in their last, I think, 14 or 15. Yeah. Surely confidence sake you'd have a go, seemingly your rods on to get relegated? You, you would think so, but I just find the mindset is that they're obviously still going to believe that they, they have half a chance of staying up with a couple of wins. They're yeah. not going to risk their key players. I would be very surprised, and I think, you know, if Pookie played and got injured, for yeah, example, came off, was out yeah. for a month or two, then they're just, not, they're just not going to take that chance. They've had quite a few injuries. I just think Daniel Fark will, will play safe and he will rest all of his key players. OK. Now, Wolves, Man United is one of the bigger clashes in the third round. What do you think I, on that I think one? I think they both play stronger teams than they would otherwise have. Been. Last year was a was a good game. Wolves obviously were a bit too strong. Yes. I think I think Wolves, you know, have been playing strong sides even in the in in the in the early Europa rounds when you know you thought they're going to win comfortably. They put out a strong side. I think they will do. I think United will chop and change a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but I think I think I've just got a sneaky feeling Wolves might come out on top. Okay. This, this now, is what... the sort of game United they really want really in the third round I don't think he wants to play a stronger side Ollie. but uh, and if he drops you know rest too many of his first team players I think they will come unstuck yeah I agree now Chelsea surely should be too good for an improving Notts Forest I think so. Uh, I think it depends if Forrest put out a strong side, but you know Chelsea have got uh, strength in depth. I think that uh, they'll be, but they will be too strong. Okay, Crystal Palace. They worry me at home to a terrible travelling Derby County side. Yes, I mean, very much so. I mean, Derby actually played tonight. Uh, it's looking like Wayne Rooney will make his debut. Okay. Um, as you say, they've lost seven now in, on the spin away, or eight on the spin. It's, uh, I think Palace will be too strong. I think, uh, again, Roy will rest one or two, but they've still got some stronger stronger players in reserve, I think, than Derby. OK, and a few people may think Middlesbrough could upset Tottenham. Are you one of them? Well, it depends if Jonathan Woodgate is brave and plays a strong team because they've had a fantastic festive period. Two big away wins after two home wins. Yeah. I'm not sure that uh, Jose is going to want to risk some of his best players, although he does like to put out a strong team in the cup. So uh, I think if he rests quite a few of his key players, Middlesbrough play a strong team. I think the odds that uh, you were showing, Middlesbrough 7-1, to one, I think uh, could be very good value. Oh, and the last one, so Liverpool-Everton? Well, I think both will play a strong team. I mean, it's not the sort of game you can rest too many. You know, Liverpool can rotate a few, uh, Everton, and if Everton do the same, I think Liverpool will be too strong. Uh, they're always good games. It doesn't you know, matter what competition it is. So I think, uh, I think it'll be a good game, but I think Liverpool will come out on top. Okay, and Monday night's game, Arsenal versus uh, Leeds United? 
I, I think Arsenal will be too strong. You know, they've got uh, you know a bit of strength in depth. I think Leeds might rest one or two. I mean, the league is obviously their priority. I think uh, Arsenal should be too strong. And if they play with uh, the same you know the same sort of passion as they showed last night, then I think that they'll be too strong for Leeds. All right, Steve. It's pressure time. If you had to pick a team to win the FA Cup, who would it be? Well, I know the favourites, but I mean, I would have chosen City. Um, I think they, they take the competition seriously. Uh, I think the league is, has gone for them. So at that point of the season, if they're in the Champions League, fine. But otherwise, um, they're not going to be busting a gut to chase Liverpool if they're, if they're still a sort of a dozen points behind with a few games to go. So I, I fancy City for the FA Cup again. Yeah, I agree. you upset of the round, Steve. There's normally one big side that goes missing. Who do you think it'll be? Ah... Uh, you know, it's a tricky one. I, I think it really depends if any of the <coughs> lower league teams decide to play a stronger team. I, I, is it an upset if Preston beat Norwich? I'm not sure. I think, I mean, if you're looking for a big, big upset, I think it depends if Jonathan Woodgate's going to be brave with Middlesbrough. If he puts out his, his, the team that has been winning the last few matches, I think they could give Tottenham a, a, a real surprise here. OK, and you were successful yesterday. Need your best bet and your best value bet for, for the weekend, Steve. Yeah, these are tricky. I think that, uh, I, 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 certainly I think my um, best bet, I've I'm, I'm just, I just got this feeling, I don't know why, that I just, I just think that your, your boys need a, need a win and I think they're going to put out a strong side and Norwich will rest everybody. So I think Preston, um, but the value bet, I think I've got to go with Aston Villa because um, <laughs> Fulham will... will no confidence in your team. Well, no, it's not so much that, but I just think that uh, as we did in, in the Carabao Cup when we didn't need to, he, Scott Parker rested everybody. I think he will rest virtually the, uh, everyone who played pretty much yesterday and uh, put out a load of kids and they just won't be strong enough to match the Villa's um, Premier League squad, squad players. So, you know, I'd be pleasantly surprised if we do hold them, but I suspect Villa, Villa will be too strong. All right, Steve. Steve, thanks once again. Take care. Pleasure. And we'll speak to you next week. Absolutely. All Bye. the best, Steve. Bye. All right, Gav. FA Cup. First game up, Birmingham Blackburn. Uh, championship championship uh, decided between these two teams. I think Birmingham, being the home team, I think they'll get a result. I think Blackburn have just gone over the top a little bit. I'm going with Birmingham. Yeah, you know, Birmingham have only won one of the last 12. They got beat 5-4 by Leeds, and then they got beat yesterday at home by Wigan. Blackman have lost their last two, I don't know, of the two teams. I think it's goals, but 21-10 at 10, Blackman, I'll have a little interest in that. Now, Brentford, Stoke City. Brentford are flying high, they third. Now, if ever there's a team, I believe it's going to rest players, it's them. Stoke are fourth bottom, experienced team. That's my upset of the round. I think Stoke City 7-2 can go there. They've drawn 0-0 already there this year. That's my upset of the week. How do you see it? Well, Brentford have won six and uh, lost one. So I think it's a uh, yep. tough game to call. Um, I like to lean towards the home teams. I know that these teams will like to rest one or two players. Yeah. But I think I like to go with the home team. I think Brentford will get a result. They, they can score goals. So yeah. that'll get in a good stead, yeah. Yeah, I think Shaw, the guy Shaw crosses back for Stoke, tighten it up. And, and as Steve said, I just wonder how many people are going to go for it. Because if you're in the play of contention in the championship, you don't want too many players. Yeah, it, it, it works both ways, with yeah. the championship and with the premiership. Uh, yeah. Both sets of managers are looking at where they can get away with resting a few players. But I mean, if you've got a big squad of 20, you can make some changes. Yeah, Stoke City for me. Now, Brighton have a decent squad. Surely they've got to be too good for Sheffield Wednesday. Yeah, I think Brighton are good bets. I think we tipped them on the weekend to, yeah. to do well. I think they'll be too strong for Sheffield Wednesday. They're oh. Brighton for me. All right. Now, Fulham have gone off the ball. We've heard from Steve. They've got several injuries. Aston Villa shocked me yesterday. The way they were playing, I couldn't see them beating Burnley, but they did. They beat them fair and square. 21 to 10 doesn't look a bad price. Yeah, good price. I think uh, Aston Villa are a very good price. I mean, they played Liverpool in the, in the Carabao Cup. They said that they see they're still with some younger players and the yeah. reserve players. I think those same players will play again. I think Fulham, like Steve says, maybe rest one, two players. I think Aston Villa are good bets at 2-1. to one. Yeah, now Preston, Steve seems to think we'll play a strong team. My guys yesterday told me we were woeful. We never had a shot at goal for the first hour. I've got a funny feeling that Norwich are going to play. May rest Pookie, but the rest of the players are going to want to go out fighting. I think they're odds on, well, they are odds on to go down. I think this is a chance to give a little bit of glamour to the season. 
Yeah, I think Preston uh, have won three, lost three in their last six games. Yeah. Norwich been a premiership team. I mean, you want to play in cup competitions, especially if you in the lower lower tiers, because you never know when you get a good chance again. Yeah. It's a good chance for them to get through. So I'm going to lean towards Norwich winning this game. Yeah, I think 18 to 10 is a good bet. Now, we go on to the next page. It's Southampton versus Huddersfield. The Saints have been excellent the last few weeks. The manager, Hassan Huttles, come out and said he wants the fans to have a good cup run. The way they're playing, they've got to beat Huddersfield. Yeah, definitely. I think this is another good bet. I mean, the price is a bit short at 5 to 10. Yeah. But Southampton, one of those teams that seem to have turned the corner in the Premiership and are getting some good results. I think it's hard to beat them at home. I've always liked them because they like to play. They, yeah. they get the ball down and they pass the ball around. I think with that manager, he drives him forward quite a lot as well. So 5 to 10 for me, definitely a good bet. Yeah, I know. One of the ties of the round is Wolves at home to Man United. Now, since Wolves have been back in the Premiership, United haven't beat them. Is this the time? No, I think, you know, I was so big on United against Arsenal. Uh, we dominated the second half, but the game was over at halftime. So we have the ball, but we just don't seem to break teams down. And I think what happens with Wolves, if they take the lead, they'll just sit back because they know yeah. that United can't create anything. So, I mean, it's a tough game. Both teams will go for it. Again, I'll lean towards the home team here and go Wolves win and draw. Yeah, I agree. And also, Man United play the League Cup Man City on Tuesday. So he may rest Rashford, one or two others. A draw looks a possibility in a replay. Now, Charlton at home. Charlton play Thursday night. They play a West Brom team who drew with Leeds. They're nine points clear. He, Slaven Bilic will rest his key players. Can Charlton, who are struggling, upset them? Another tough game. I mean, you know, the, the West Brom side that I watched yesterday against Leeds mm. showed good glimpses of a good ball-playing team that want to get promoted. And when you're in that type of mindset and you're looking at trying to get promoted, you don't want to get injured. Yeah. So there could be an upset on the cards, but on form you would think that West Brom would win this game. But I'm, I'm going to lean towards the draw and maybe some extra time here. Yeah. yeah, I think there's an upset here. Now Chelsea won to a disappointing result yesterday. Notts Forest are a difficult team. I think this could be a tougher game than it looks. Yeah, we said that Chelsea would battle a little bit against Brighton. They had two, two or three strong teams that played during the week. Um, Chelsea with the depth, I think, might just have a little edge over them, especially playing at home. Yeah. They'll get the crowd behind them. Uh, you wouldn't really think that Nostroyes could trouble them, but uh, stranger things happen mm -hmm. in the FA Cup, and this is a tough game, but I think Chelsea will get through. Yeah, talking of strange things, Crystal Palace, that was a game I watched yesterday with Norwich. They just jigger jigger too much for me. Now, Derby are struggling. Wayne Rooney will play in this game. Could there be an upset? No, I'm, I'm very strong on Crystal Palace. Yeah, I know a mate of mine is a big Crystal Palace fan. Um, he'll be cursing me if I don't go with Palace. Yeah? Yeah. I think Palace are a good bet at 5 to 10. I think Derby travel there, Palace will be too strong. Yeah, they Just too be. much class in that Palace team um, over Derby. Yep. Okay, well, we go on to the next game where upset possibilities. Middlesbrough won their last four. They murdered Press in a deep deal yesterday. Tottenham have been struggling without Harry Kane, but they do tend to play better without him. Yeah, I mean, the song's also been missing, so that also contributes to the, to the workload of other players around them. So yeah. that's why Spurs are, are, are battling. And I think Song's a very good player for them. Middlesbrough, like I said, have won four and drawn two. <laughs> Spurs come there with a little bit of confidence dented. Uh, Middlesbrough might get about them, you know. One of those cup games could be a real cup tie, this. Um, guys getting stuck in. Um, again, I mean, I would, I would go with Spurs, but, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if these guys take them to an extra time and you know, yeah. give me a draw, yeah. Yeah, four to ten is not the right price, but uh, I think there should be a few goals in that. Now, QPR, talking of goals, beat Cardiff 6-1 at home yesterday. Swansea play tonight. It's going to be a goal fest. Swansea get an upset? No, I like, I like QPR. I mean, I went for them on the weekend. Uh, they scored a lot of goals. Surprised me they scored a lot of goals. I think the week before they had dropped some points. I'm leaning towards QPR to win this one narrowly, maybe 2-1, 1-0. One, one, no. All right. Now, the big tie is the... Liverpool, Derby, Liverpool, Everton. Surely Liverpool too good. Yeah, like we said, Man City against Everton. Once Man City take the, take the lead in the game, they just pass you off the park. I think Liverpool unbeaten in about 30 matches, 17 at home. You can't look past Liverpool. I think Liverpool could win this competition. Depending on... Because I say that because if they get through uh, the Champions League and the league is almost done with five, six weeks to go, Liverpool put out strong teams to win. I think Liverpool win this game quite comfortably. Yeah, I agree. I think you're right. Now, West Ham, David Moyes took over and they won 4-0 against Bournemouth yesterday. 6-10 to 10 looks a gift, yeah? Yeah, a gift. I mean, we said that they would beat Bournemouth. I mean, the new manager taking over. 
there's West Ham uh, really showing they can score goals. I think it'll be too strong for Gillingham. Good bet. Okay, Monday night's game, Arsenal, who I think have improved big time under Arteta against a Leeds United team. Dangerous team. Score yeah. goals. This could be a hard tempo game. I mean, uh, Arsenal really came out yesterday against United and really played well. Yeah. For the last 20 minutes, they seem to be in borrowed time again. They're just hanging on with their legs are gone. So I don't know if they're not fit enough, this Arsenal team, or the... The, the training sessions that they've been going through have been working mainly on set stuff. But yeah, Arsenal should be too strong with that performance against United. They should win this quite comfortably. All right. PSL returns. Starts on Friday with a KZN derby. Maritzburg United against Arrows. Tough game. Uh, Arrows travelling up the highway to, to Maritzburg. Tough, tough one, this one. Uh, I'm going to lean towards the home team. Yeah. Uh, Tinkler's really got the boys playing, so... I'm going to go Marysburg one and draw. Yeah, they don't get beat too often at Harry Goal, I agree. Now, Bloemfontein Celtic, who you just don't know what you're going to get. Pirates have come right, even though they away from home, they struggle. Yeah, Pirates have the support. So no matter where they go in the country, they yeah. have the support behind them. Um, they've got a new coach as well, so I think they'll be punching quite high above their weight as well in this game. Celtic, with their passionate support, full house. Tough one to call, but you go with pedigree, and I think I'll go with Pirates. Yeah, I think goals is there. I think both teams to score was even money over two and a half for 16 to 10. That'll be my play in that game. Now, your old teammate, Clinton Larson, takes over Polokwani against his old team. They've lost their nine, last nine in a row, playing against a chipper team who have come right. They've won four and drawn one of the last five. Can Clint get the ship back on track? Well, Clint is he's, he's, he's quite methodical in what he does with the teams and that, but I think uh, travelling... Chipper, Chipper coming up there, have quite a few good players in their team and yeah. their, their strike force is quite good. Um, I'm leaning towards Chipper uh, to win this game. I know Paulo Kwani, you know, once, once they start winning, then I'll have some confidence in backing them, but they're nowhere near winning a match at the moment. Yeah. Maybe the break over December would help, but I'm leaning towards Chipper to win this. All right, now Gavin Hunt takes his bid vest being back to his whole hunting ground. Surely bid vest fits, one seven the last nine away from home. They've got to beat Stellenbosch. Yeah, they've turned the corner, but uh, they're scoring goals again. I think the players look a lot more happier. I think once the team starts getting in their winning habit, they just seem to perform a bit better. I think Gavin's got wits going again. I think they'll win this game comfortably. Okay, now the big game is Supersport United against Kaiser Chiefs in Numbombella Stadium in Nelspreit. Supersport have got the Jonah over Chiefs. Yeah, they drew one all. I think this is an upset, yeah. Uh, yeah, I love. Uh, I think Supersport to one three drawn four against uh, against the last four. Well, that's the last seven games. Chiefs struggled a little bit. They came off the cup competition, uh, not not doing that well. Their last league match and they drew. Uh, Supersport for me. I think they'll get a result. Yeah, I think Chiefs are going to battle second half of the season. I just have this feeling that the pressure that's going to be on Chiefs now. Uh, it's going to take its toll. I think Supersport can get a result. Well, haven't won a trophy for four years, so maybe the pressure will tell. Now, Amazulu Sundowns. This game's played at Moses Mabida, not in an Omlalazi Stadium. Supersport, I mean, sorry, Sundowns, good things? Yeah, Sundowns, the best, best team in South Africa by a long way. I mean, yeah. they've really got some good ball players. Amazulu struggling at the bottom of the table. I think Sundowns of the past would have uh, cleaned up Amazulu on any given day. I think this team could even be better. So I'm leaning towards Sundowns. I think 9 to 10 is a very good price. All right. Now, two out of form teams. Cape Town City have only won one of the last 13. Baraka have only won one of the last 10. Draw looks uh, a good thing. A draw does look like a good thing, but I'm leaning towards Cape Town City. I think they'll have a little bit more. Uh, Baraka travelling down over this period now coming down. I don't know how much they've done in their, in their week or two break, but I'm leaning towards Cape Town City to get back on the winning trail. Yeah. Okay. Now, last game is Sunday, Hoppos 3, Highlands Park. Who run be uh, sorry one three drawn one and lost one of the last five at home against a black leopard team who've been struggling away from home eleven to ten. Yeah, I'm leaning towards the uh, Highlands Park owner Garma side. I think he's he gets his boys up for the games. Yeah. I think the leopard team have to travel a bit. Their form hasn't been great. Highlands Park for me. I think I get a result. Good price eleven to ten. Yeah, I agree. We now continue with our exotics. Our first one is the soccer six on Saturday. I've gone Pirates win and draw at Bloemfontein Celtic. I've gone Polokwane City. I've got a funny feeling they won't get beat against Chipper United. I think Bidvest Fitz will be too good for Stellenbosch. I've gone the field and the Super Sport United cards Kaiser Chiefs and Wolverhampton Wanderers Man United fixtures and ended off with Mamelodi Sundowns and away win against Amazulu. Our second soccer six, I've gone the field in the Brentford Stoke City game. I've gone Brighton win and draw at home against Sheffield Wednesday. I don't see Aston Villa losing at Fulham. I've banked Oxford to beat Hartlepool. 
I've gone the field in the Preston-Norwich City game and I've banked Southampton to beat Huddersfield 2-1-6. On to our soccer 10. I've gone Orlando Pirates to win a draw at Bloemfontein Celtic. I've gone Polokwane City, win and draw at, against Chipper United. I've banked Bidbest Vits to beat Stellenbosch. I don't see Aston Villa losing at Fulham. I've banked Brighton Hove Albion to beat Sheffield Wednesday. A second page, I've gone the field in the press in North End Norwich City game. I've gone Southampton to win at home against Huddersfield. I think Supersport United will not get beat against Kaiser Chiefs. I've gone the field in the Wolverhampton Wanderers Man United game and ended with Mamelodi Sundowns and away win against Amazulu, 288. On to our soccer 13, I've gone the field in the Wolves Man United clash. I've gone Aston Villa, win and draw at Fulham. I've banked Leicester to beat Wigan. Southampton to beat Huddersfield and Watford to beat Tranmere Rovers. I've gone the field in the Brentford Stoke City fixture. I've gone Brighton, win and draw at home against Sheffield Wednesday. A second page, I've banked Bournemouth to beat Luton. I've gone the field in the Preston North End Norwich City game. I've banked Reading to beat Blackpool. I've gone Fleetwood Town, win and draw at home against Portsmouth and ended up with two bankers Cardiff City to beat Carlisle and Oxford United to beat Hartlepool, 367 rand. Gav, what are your bets for the weekend? Well, I'm going to lean towards the two teams that uh, I went against last week. I'm going to go with West Ham to win and Aston Villa to win. I think those two teams could uh, get us through this weekend. Short prices, but I think they'll both win. Yeah, my best bet is Reading. You know, they beat Fulham away, they beat Preston away, and they're playing a Blackpool team who's struggling. They've won one of the last seven away from home, not going too well in League One, so it's 9-10 to 10 Reading. I've contemplated which way I'm going to go. Originally, I was going for Norwich against to win at Preston. I'm going to go for Stoke City. 7 to 2 is a great price. So that's my best value bet. On to Budgie's bets for the weekend. Our FA Cup 6 on Exa. I've gone Barnsley to beat Crew Alexandra. I've gone Burnley to beat Peterborough. I've gone Millwall to beat Newport County. I've gone Newcastle United to beat Rochdale. I've gone Reading to beat Blackpool, and I think West Ham will be too good for Gillingham. 4,200, 20 to 1. I handicap 5, all these teams have to win by more than one goal. I've gone Man City to beat Port Vale. I've gone Newcastle to beat Rochdale. I've gone Sheffield United to beat Flyd. I've been Watford to beat Tranmere, and I've gone West Ham to beat Gillingham, all by more than one goal. Our second page are both teams to score sides. I've gone Birmingham, Blackburn. I've gone Charlton, West Brom. Southampton, Huddersfield. Wolves, Man United, and ended off with Arsenal and Leeds, 2,500 to 200. Our winner draw Fava. I've gone Aston Villa at Fulham. I think Charlton won't get beat at home against West Brom. I think Stoke City is going to cause an upset against Brentford. I've gone Super Sport United to avoid defeat against Kaiser Chiefs and ended in Spain, where I don't see a real Batiste losing at Alaves, 2,700 to 200. Our PSL quad, I've gone Bidvest Fitz to beat Stellenbosch. I've gone Highlands Park to beat Black Leopards. And both teams to score in the Bloom Celtic Pirates and Super Sport Chiefs games. 12 to 1, 2,400 to 200. And I've ended up in Spain with our Spanish quartet. I've gone Granada to beat Mallorca. I've gone Valencia to beat Arba. And both teams to score in the Catafe Real Madrid and Sevilla Atletico Madrid fixtures, 2,200 to 200. I jumped the gun with my, both, with my best bet. It is Reading. They are at home against... Uh, sorry, I actually misplayed. Reading are at home against Blackpool. My apologies. And at 9 to 10, I think they'll be too good. Gab, thanks well, for coming yeah. in again. Yeah, thanks, Budge. Nice to be here. FA Cup to win outright. I think Liverpool won the FA Cup this year. I think the, the league will be over. They'll have okay. a full squad of players. I think they'll be ready. I think they'll win the FA Cup. All right. So I've got a lurker to reach the semi finals. They were 10 to 1. Sheffield United, they'll have a few of my men. But I just think Real Madrid will knock Man City out the Champions League in the last 16. And this FA Cup is tailor made for Man City. To everyone that's listened, thank you very much. And remember, Please stay on site.